Hey, welcome to the Tony Scott Internet Show for Thursday. Man, has a week gone by fast? I mean, real. I mean, weeks go by fast. Weeks go by slow. This one seems like I've gone by like with warp speed. Or is it just me? I mean, here it is Thursday. Scandal Thursday already. I got a uh, tennis banquet to go to tonight for my, my daughter Maria. She's got a tennis banquet. Her first year on the tennis team in high school. So I'll be going to that tonight. So I'll probably be taping Scandal and then come home and watching it. And I said this uh, uh, a while back, that the, the uh, How to Get Away with Murder, everybody's just going crazy about it. In fact, there were more people watching that than watching Scandal last week, which is really saying something. Uh, but I don't know. I just, I watch it with my wife and I'm like, uh, you know, there's just too much. I'm a simple-minded person. There's just too many things going on at one time. They're either going back and forth from the past to the present, you know, and just Viola Davis takes off her wig and then her husband messing around with a college girl who wound up dead and he was like one of the last ones around her and this other guy just God, it's just for, for that late at night it's too much for me <laughs> I'm a simple minded person what do you want what do you want from me so alright what's going on in the world well in Ferguson last night three people were arrested uh, during some protesting I believe down by the police state. police has, have told the protesters you can protest on a sidewalk. You can't block traffic. It becomes a safety issue, this, that, and which, you know, I understand that. I think most people understand that. But the protesters, they're going to do what they're going to do. So three people got arrested because I guess they decided they would block the roadway. Now, somebody broke out one of the TV stations' uh, backlights on their van. And I said, we don't need that. We don't need See, we have to be very careful. I mean, because like, you're allowed to be angry, but you're not allowed to be violent. Because being violent, then you start infringing on other people's rights. You have a right to protest. You have a right to do things like that. But you don't have to right. You don't have the right to damage. You know. And you're saying, well, we're talking about the murder of a young man. I understand. I get all that. I get all that. But do you want to get things done or not? That's really the bottom line. You know. Uh, I know activists have uh, asked for a 48-hour advance notice uh, when they're ready to announce the verdict so that they can do their best to try and keep uh, peace, try to keep it from getting out of hand, the protest from getting violent. So that, if that's what they want, if they, if they think that will help the community, then I think they should be given 48 hours advance notice. If, if, that's, if that's what they think will help. We need all hands on deck, all ideas on the table as to what will keep us from going down that road we went down in August. You know, so I have no problem with that. I wonder, you know, I was thinking about this the other day, like with the grand jury. You know, so if I were on a grand jury, obviously I'm going to be on, I vote to indict him, but... I guess if you think about it, indict him and let us go back. Let the and the grand jury's probably think, let us go on with our lives, you know. Because indicting him doesn't mean he's going to jail. Indicting him means it goes to the next phase of the justice system. He'll go to trial. After that, whether he's found guilty or not, that's the, so. It seems like the, you know, because the phrase "TV has helped a lot." You know, the grand jury they always said on these TV crime shows will indict a ham sandwich, and it seems like it'd be fairly easy to do because. It doesn't mean that that person's going to jail. It just means it goes on to the next phase. So why not indict Darren Wilson? And let's just move on. You know, to the next phase. Not indicting him. Which I still find hard to believe. Because there seems to be enough there, in my opinion, to move on to the next level. Because if I'm on the grand jury, I'm thinking, why put it all on us? You know, we, we, we've heard what we've heard. We've read, gone over what we've gone over. There seems to be some, something happened there that shouldn't have happened. Was he justified? I, I, I can't answer that question because I think he was not justified. I think that, that there was nothing Michael Brown did that warranted him being shot to death. You know? And there's a fine line in Ferguson, in this area actually right now, maybe in America where there's a fine line between being a supporter of police and being a supporter of Darren Wilson. 
There's a fine line there. I support police because it's a tough job. It's a tough job to do. Make no mistake. Any job that involves you walking around with a gun on your hip is a tough gig. Okay? I, I get that. But you signed up for it. You weren't drafted to be a cop. You signed up to be a cop knowing that the job was going to be tough. And there takes a certain mentality and a certain amount of restraint to be a police officer, you know. But I'm frightful. I, I'm, I'm really concerned, worried, scared about what may happen if there is no indictment. And my question would be to, to the protesters, you know, do what you got to do. To the ones who plan, the ones who are planning to wreak havoc. If there is no indictment, you're not a protester. You're, you're not a protester. You're a troublemaker. You know, if you're planning on, you know, uh, looting stores, if you're planning on burning down businesses, if you're planning on, you know, vandalizing homes and businesses, why would you do that to your own community? Why would you do that? A community that's been here for years, people who who are doing trying to do nothing more than to go to work and provide for their family, why would you shut their business down by destroying it? Why would you do that? That's that's the thing that we need to, you know, keep in mind that you know, wreaking havoc is way different than being unhappy and being like where you want to commit violent acts where you want to attack people or businesses or cause just mayhem. There's a huge difference. And you've got to see it. Young people have said this isn't, this isn't your parents' civil rights movement. It absolutely is not. Abs- I, couldn't agree, I couldn't agree more that it's not. It's different. It's different. Because to some people, this has gone on long enough. You know, this generation has seen things on top of what my generation saw or my parents' generation saw. Now it's piled up even more. Now you have, And then now you have the social media aspect. Now, you know, we used to hear about police brutality. Now we see it via smartphones and things like that. So the whole thing is, is, is you know, by no means at all is it uh, my parents or even my civil rights movement. A judge yesterday struck down Missouri's ban on same-sex marriage. And it seems like there were a lot of people who were just waiting. They were, they were in, their, in their ready mode, you know, like a track star, ready to make a dart to go get married the moment this, uh, this ruling came down. Is, is it a surprise? No, this, the ban on, on gay marriage or same-sex marriage has been uh, struck down in states all over the union. So it was only a matter of time before Missouri's came up. Attorney General uh, says he's going to appeal it. But, you know, can we let's move on to something more important. You know, gay people, the LBGT community uh, have as many rights as I have and you have. Absolutely, they have as many rights. Do they pay taxes? Yes. So they should get rights. You get rights. You pay taxes. You're a citizen. You pay taxes. You're a citizen. You get rights. You know? What the Bible says is an interpretation. It could say flat out, you know, homosexuality is an abomination, but that doesn't mean that you're allowed to act on that. My understanding is the Bible says we love each other no matter what. And whatever we think, uh, uh, whatever sin we think man is committing, we let God handle that. And we continue to love each other. That's what I'm going with because life is just too damn short for me to be worried about things that really have no bearing on how I live my life. Does that sound selfish? Yeah, maybe so. Maybe so. But it's it's how I feel. So it took less than three days, and we get the young lady back who was snatched off the street in Philadelphia when she was walking home from visiting her godson. Carlicia Freeland Gaither was rescued from what police call a vicious predator. He, she was kidnapped. She's recovering. She did suffer some injuries, but she is going to make a recovery uh, physically, mentally. You know, we don't know. That's quite a trauma to go through. But her alleged kidnapper is Delvin Barnes. 
He's 37 years old. This all happened in a Jessup, Maryland parking lot, the rescue. Um, agents got a tip. They say the man uh, may have been a suspect after seeing surveillance photos. Uh, they knew of a man who looked like the guy. So they, they started, you know, what, what their plan was going to be. They started tracking his uh, four Taurus through the GPS device that was put inside his car by the car dealership where he bought the car because he has poor credit. <laughs> I know this is a serious situation, but dude, you got caught. You got caught from doing something hideous because you got bad credit. Wow. <laughs> so so they, 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 you know, tracked his location in a shopping center parking lot and they moved in and they got him. They say he was more surprised than anything else. I bet he was shocked when they told him how they tracked him down. The young lady was screaming. They say she was screaming hysterically for help as the arrest was going down. She was telling them, I'm the woman, I'm the woman that was snatched up in Philadelphia. So they're saying that uh, he may be tied to the murder of a 16 year old girl last month in Virginia. Just got death penalty written all over it, man. I mean, it does. It does. You know? Well, how can you say that, Tony? You just said that in the Bible we're supposed to love each other. Well, you know what? Every once in a while you got to thin the herd. You know what I'm saying here? You know, you thin the herd for what this man allegedly did. You don't thin the herd for being gay. <laughs> you, you don't. You, that's not a thin the herd kind of deal. So what's going to happen now that the Republicans have control of Congress? People say that it's going to be a different world. Well, I think that the media makes it more than it is. Because there's not one body of government, or in this case, two bodies of government, that can just... It's, 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 this is not a dictatorship. You know, when, when you know a lot of people feared when President Obama won election the first time he won, people feared that... You know, the world was going to be a post-racial America. Well, we, we know how that turned out. That was like the biggest. And if you bought into that, you're about as stupid as that statement is. You know, racism was going to end because we elected a black president? No. Who thought that? You can raise your hands. I won't judge. I promise. You know, but for, you know, because Republicans have control of Congress is it going to be even harder for the president to get business done? Yeah, probably. Probably. Uh, are they going to repeal Obamacare like they said they would? They may try. They may win. But, you know, here's my question. Okay, if Obamacare is the law of the land, and let's just say for this conversation that Republicans repeal Obamacare, and then when the Democrats take control of both houses, which they will do. I mean, it happened under President Bush that the Democrats had control of both houses for a minute. So, I mean, it, so did they put Obamacare back in? And then when Republicans take over again, did they take it back out? I mean, it, does Ob Obamacare become a ping pong game? That's, that's the thing I would want to know because, you know, Obamacare is a good thing. Anytime we have something that can help people, that's a good thing. That's a good thing. And there are versions of Obamacare... You know, Mitt, Mitt Romney, when he was governor of Massachusetts, one of the few things that he did was come up with a model that was similar to Obamacare for the state of Massachusetts. Mitch McConnell, who is, seems to be the person who's going to become the majority leader, because he was, he was uh, the minority leader in the Senate, now he's poised to be the majority leader. There's a, a, a version of Obamacare in Kentucky, his home state, called Connect, uh, I think it's KY-NECT, connect, uh, that they have in, in Kentucky. So, But you know what, since, since the Republicans, and I was telling my wife this yesterday, since the Republicans have control of the House, to me it would be, and, and the Republicans are, are, there's a lot of infighting going on as to what, you know, because they're, they're so excited they got control, what are we going to do, you know? <laughs> Ooh, oh boy, we got control. What are we going to do? You know? So to me, it's like one of the first things I would do is I would remove John Boehner and I would remove, remove as Speaker of the House and remove Mitch McConnell as, as the heir apparent to being the majority leader of the Senate to send a message that 
It's a new beginning. We have, you know, the Republicans always talk about how we need to expand the, the base. We need more Latinos. We need more African Americans. We need more of everything. And we need people to understand that the GOP, the grand old party, is not the enemy here. We'll remove these two fossils from their positions, elect some, put some new people in there, and show America that you're serious about getting things done. I, I don't see anything wrong. I think that would be a great gesture to just remove. I mean, you're going to have control anyway, so why not just remove them and put some new leadership in there and let's, and let's get this thing going? I would love to see that. I think that, I think that would send such a great message but we'll see the meetings are supposed to start uh, this week between uh, the GOP and President Obama we'll see where it goes Facebook is launching a fundraising campaign because they they want to fight Ebola their founder Mark Zuckerberg uh, made a personal 25 million dollar donation to help battle Ebola and Facebook is going to make it easier for others to do so also uh, Mark Zuckerberg's donation went to the Centers for Disease Control Foundation, but Facebook wants to target three other groups, the International Medical Corps, the International Federation of Red Cross, and Red Crescent Societies, and Save the Children. So Facebook is figuring that, you know, we got 1.3 billion users who will see this message, and if they all, they all donate a dollar each, we could get what the, U, the UN one says, we need a billion dollars to fight this. So Facebook is going to team also with UNICEF to provide information through Facebook, which is what social media is. One of the good things about social media is you can get great information out. There's a lot. There's more misinformation that's put out on social media than there is actual factual information because people just tend to see something in in print or typed on their screen and they take it as the gospel, and that's just simply not the case. But you know, there's some people who will never understand that. So, and then. And then when you bust them out on, they go, oh, yeah, I wondered about that. Then what'd you put it up for? I almost said a cuss word. I don't know why I can't cuss because this isn't on the radio. But I guess I don't really cuss. But I don't really say like the the primary words. I mean, there might be a damn or a hell or something like that. But I don't say the primary words because I I guess I just, I'm an old radio head. And that's just what it is. I see a microphone in front of me and the filter comes on. So that's the deal on that. I got a lot of news about, I got Suge Knight, the judge, like feeling sorry for him. Did you hear about this? K. Michelle, somebody tried to blackmail her. She's like, whatever. Yeah, I did it. Who cares? And I'll tell you about that and a whole lot more coming up on the Tony Scott Internet Show. We'll do that in about 20 seconds. All right, I got to get a drink of water. Hold on. Do you want to reach an audience that you haven't tapped into yet and not blow your budget? The Tony Scott Internet Show is new, growing, and available to you. Advertising on the Tony Scott Internet Show is extremely affordable. Contact us at advertise at TonyScottShow.com. All right, we're back on the Tony Scott Internet Show. Tony wouldn't take that long. I just, I just need it. Needed a swallow of my uh, iced tea over here. Yes. So, uh, what else is going on? Artie Lang is a comedian whose most prominent role was the being the comedian on Howard Stern's show, both on uh, regular radio, which they call terrestrial radio, and satellite radio, where Howard is now. Well, he left Howard Stern's show because he had some personal issues, some demons he was dealing with, and has slowly been uh, coming back, but now apparently he is really. Artie Lang has been banned from ESPN after he tweeted like some sexual and some racially tinged, and tinged, tinged isn't the right word, jokes about a uh, African American female host on ESPN. And uh, some of them involved her being a slave owned by Thomas Jefferson. And Artie Lang masturbating. You know, ESPN, they said Artie Lang's tweets were reprehensible. And now they're saying, you know what, he, he won't be booked on the show anymore. Now, Artie Lang has tweeted an apology directly to uh, Carrie Champion from First Take, the female who was targeted. But he also says, I stand by the joke as a comedian. You know, that that's the thing, is that... Well, first of all, a little bit more. Artie Lang was also, you know, cut from Comedy Central 
from a gig he had there because of slavery retweet or slavery tweets actually. So Artie's hiding behind, you know, the the the. Uh, a lot of times, comedians when they make things that are over the comments or jokes that are over the line, they say, "I'm a comedian." Come on, no, you know, I've never bought that. I just thought that was a a crappy excuse. For for what you said, for getting away with what you said, you know, and uh, I've I listened I've listened I listened to him a lot when he was on the uh, Howard Stern satellite show. Uh, I listen to radio different than you do, you know. I think I think Howard Stern Howard Stern first of all has, has evolved for what made him famous, right? He's not nearly as shocking. As he was back in the day, but I listen more from a, a radio perspective as far as how he executes things, how he gets into things, things like that. So, having said that, I've listened to a lot of his shows, not so much for content, but because of how he lays out his show. And when Artie Lang was Artie Lang made a lot of racial comments on that show that he got away with, you know. Uh, and you're saying, well, Robin, 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 Thicke, Robin Quivers, who was on the show in African American, she never called him out on it. Well, you know, everybody has their right to do. Even he has his right. Now, you can't hide behind free speech. Free people say you've got free speech. Free speech is this isn't necessarily the right for you to say what you want. Free speech was more as protecting you from what you said from the government coming after you. It was never really intended for you to say, I can say whatever I want. I got free speech. It was, that's not, that's, no, no, because you're not protected from your, if you criticize your employer and get fired for it, you can't really use free speech because that's not what it's for. <laughs> you know, there, there's a price to pay. You don't have to pay, you just don't have to pay a price from the government. You see, that's, that's, that's the deal on that. Uh, K. Michelle uh, did an interview where apparently there is a, a woman. K. Michelle had a lesbian threesome some years ago, and apparently it was recorded on video. And one of the women says, I have the sex tape, K. Michelle. Obviously, she wants money. K. Michelle says, She got a um, sex tape of me and her and another girl having sex. Yeah, I did that. I just make sure, if you're going to lick some, make sure it's airbrushed. Okay. Make sure I look good. You know, five years ago on the phone, in the dark, whatever. Well, she loves it. She what's it, what's it? She likes it. I love it. Is that how that goes? You know, first of all, it sounds like she says, if you're going to lick something, I think she said, if you're going to leak something. And it sounds like she said, you know, in the dark, in the dark, with a dog, in the dark, I think is what she was saying. But hey, you know what? She don't care. I, I don't care. What the hell has that got to do with me? You know, that's a courtesy of Brittany Lewis and Global Grind. All right. Suge Knight had to go to court because, you know, him and, uh, was it Cat Williams? Uh, got accused of, I don't know, something with the paparazzi. Something happened with the paparazzi. And he went to court. He turned himself in because it was an arrest warrant for him, uh, for Suge Knight. And he went before a judge who says, you know what? I'll give you a break. He says, I, I understand what you guys, celebrities, have to deal with with the paparazzi. Uh, bail is still five hundred thousand dollars, but uh, but you know, it's all good, man. You know, it's, and Suge, I don't know, is Suge is he softening up, man? Because is supposedly he teared up in court. Suge Knight doesn't tear up, you know. You're a man, which is the stupidest thing ever, right? I mean, you should, I used to make jokes about that on a radio show about being a man and men don't cry and all that, and people actually didn't get the joke because to me. <laughs> That's, that's the stupidest thing ever. A real man shows all of his emotions. Ain't nothing wrong with that, man. Nothing wrong with that at all. Harvard University, Harvard University, has uh, this week is sex week at Harvard. And they've offered a workshop uh, that aims to help college students practice healthy and pleasurable anal sex. So they got an anal sex workshop. It is called What What in the Butt Anal Sex 101. <laughs> I, I don't know, man. I, I, I don't know. They're just trying to educate people. You know, that's what they got to do. You know, how many people were in that class? And were you allowed to take pictures? I mean, hey, what is the article on Huffington Post says? Bottoms up. <laughs> that 
is so stupid. Oh, man. But you know what? If you're interested in anal sex, I guess you should have uh, proper instructions so you don't put yourself in harm's way or that you don't injure anybody. Right? I guess. I, what, do I, what do I know? <laughs> I don't know nothing. <laughs> especially about that. So, all right, I'm going to leave it right here, man. We've gone through like 26 minutes, 25 minutes of show, of program, as I say. And I appreciate you listening and sharing and all that kind of stuff like that. All right, uh, I'll talk to you tomorrow. Have a great day. Man, I love you all for your support. I'll see you later.